Dean is fantastic. He had the hardest job to steer this big, massive story and then edit it after it's all done and have it make sense. My choice is to shoot the action as if it was action in any good action movie. Then I'm laying in characters whose concerns are somewhat ludicrous in context of that action. So while people are shooting stuff up, they're arguing about their relationship. Remember when we had that conversation about how you were gonna lay low? You didn't have to tell me when to lay. You have to commit to at least a grounded reality in order for it to become absurd, which it sort of needs to be. But it's in context of, of life and death and real stakes. Stop cutting wires! I knew we were gonna die! Dean understands that tone is a very tricky thing. And if you push for comedy too much, the sort of truth of the action plot falls away. If you push for action too much, the comedy starts to dwindle a bit, you know? So it's, it's trying to maintain a pretty even balance between the two things. And his sort of innate understanding of that is what makes him really the right director for this. He's not gonna kill me. Yeah, nobody kills Frank Moses. Right. This is a movie that is about character and all the action comes out of these people. And these are, these are slightly larger than life. You know, characters, you know, you see John Malkovich and he's, you know, he's always just on the edge of going too far. Um, and so whenever they have action scenes, you know, the, the action is heightened to sort of reflect who, who, who they all are. So we start with a Chechen face that hold him down! Stop, stop him! This is how we do it. Dean wanted to have the action based in reality. We didn't want any comedy to come from the stunts themselves. We wanted them to be full-on action scenes in themselves and make them as much Bond-like or Bourne-like. <laughs> and let the comedy come from within the performance of the actors. Let them bring the comedy to it, but make sure that the, the fights and the shootouts and the car chases were still exciting in themselves. created these, these moments that of certainly heightened reality uh, that, that, are, that are fun. Because it is a fun movie, but the action wants to feel you know, threatening and, and, and kick ass. So to do that and, and, and bring it up was, was definitely the challenge in this one. All of the characters are professional killers, so you know, they, they brought their own style to it. I think one of the great things about working with Bruce is that it challenges us. <laughs> In every Bruce Willis scene, we're trying to ask the question, how can we subvert it? How can we change it? How can we, you know, do something that surprises us? Bruce, when he's coming into an action scene, has lots of ideas himself about what he's going to uh, put in the fight, what's good for him. He's done so many fights over the years, he knows what he's, he likes and he wants to see. So we go in on the day with a basic outline of what the fight should be and then let it evolve as we go along because there's always interesting things on set that you want to use or play with that Bruce will bring in and you adapt as you go along. And it brings his own flavor to it, which is often quite hard and full of energy and full of strength and contact. It's very fun when Bruce Willis handcuffs, you know, Bianca and Lee to the refrigerator. We think we're gonna have a big fight between them. The fight's been coming for 20 minutes and now it's over. And instead, the fight is, you know, Bian Hung taking down 25 police officers, which is really fun to watch. He knows Kung Fu. His background is not uh, as a fighter, though. He's, he's an actor. But he really steps it up in this film. And being a hitman from Korea, we really felt it would be fun to have a small space throwdown. Uh, in a very classic way. That's sort of an ode to, you know, a lot of the 70s kung fu films and 80s kung fu films that I grew up watching. I got few favorite scenes in this film, but the best would be the one that I fight with Bruce. We really go at it, and he's a big star, and he made a great contribution. He's funny, tough, he's a great fighter and it's just fun to be around. That scene is not just the only fight. It gives some friendship 
and humor as well. I don't speak Korean. I got some bruises and some scars, little scars, but it's okay. I like the idea that that Han and Frank Moses are not done at the end of this movie. You owe me 30 mil for the plane and 20 for not killing you. You're a dead man, Moses. Helen actually turned out to be a really great fighter. There's a scene where she takes out an intelligence guy and she smashes him to all, smashes his head on the table and puts him down. And you can see how cool she looks doing that. I've never heard of you. Must have been a bit before my time. Ooh. Well, you've heard of me now. She did do all the stunts herself. She's, she's very keen to shoot guns and physically perform and run around. And, uh, she absolutely nailed it. We've got uh, two car chases. We've got one in Paris and one in London. We thought we'd put uh, Mary Louise Parker into the 2CV and, and bring in a comedy performance element with that. And then bring in the cool side with Bruce driving the Porsche and skidding around in the other car and have this kind of competition going on between the two girls within the car chase. They made a car with a man in the front driving it and even with him in it. I drove into a wall. And David Thewlis on the motorbike as well, of course, who actually absolutely loved it. He enjoyed every minute of it and uh, was great fun to work with. Can you drive this ridiculous thing? I'm a fan of Lotus, and I noticed that they had and new car coming out. The car is incredible. At the time we were shooting, they had only produced four, and we had three of them. You know, watching them pull bootleggers in old London streets that were, you know, nine, nine, nine feet wide. I mean, we had to wet down all the streets, use special tires, the whole thing, in order to get the car to drift. I think the fun element is what makes Red 2 different. You can keep the action big, but it's still fun. You have to make a good action movie, an adventure, that you lay these ludicrous characters into. And yeah, that's a, that's a difficult task, because it has to work on both levels. 